in this lecture we are going to uh, check out some methods with which we can make this game more interactive yes I'm talking about this fight with burger game uh, that we developed in one of the previous lectures okay so the first thing that we're going to do uh, in order to make it more interesting for the user uh, is you know there are only four monkeys right now that are visible to me on this uh, playground can we make more copies of these monkeys let's see what is the way uh, with which we can uh, make it happen these monkeys are getting created because of this for loop that I've defined over here in this workspace of game lab so the i is starting from zero it is going to go till three at the point when the, the value of i will reach to four this condition will become false and the compiler is going to come out of this for loop uh, we'll increase this four to let's say 15. now when you will run this game you will be able to see some more monkeys sprites on this playground so that's how you can increase the number of uh, these monkeys sprites just by changing this if you want to have some 30 monkeys on this playground so you just have to change this number to 30 and this is what you're going to get as an output right so this is one of the ways we can make it more interesting. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to define a beautiful background for this game. Let's come on this animation part. And here I'm going to hit this new animation tab. Automatically, I'm going to get redirected over here on this beautiful animation library. From here, let's uh, check this backgrounds category. And I think we'll be able to find a good background uh, from here. So let's select this one. Okay, this one uh, is looking good. Let's select this one. Uh, now I'm going to rename this uh, sprite to BG. Let's come on that coding panel and define the required code for accessing that background over here on this playground. So we need to convert it back into text-based coding. We can copy these two lines of code we have defined for accessing that burger sprite on the playground and we can paste it right on the top let's change the name of this variable to back this one also I am changing it to back let's convert it back into block based coding and from this drop down over here uh, I'm going to select BG let's hit this run button and see what is going to happen so we'll be able to see that background over here now getting reflected on this playground let's make it more interactive how about if we can make these monkeys change into some other things every time they collide with this burger so for doing that we can come on this animation library and add some frames to this monkey sprite now uh, for adding the frames to this sprite we can make use of this add new frame option let's hit this and see what's going to happen so we are going to get redirected on this beautiful animation library again uh, now i am going to come on this emoji section and select uh, select uh, one sprite from here so let's select this one okay so uh, as you can see one more frame has got added uh, to this sprite and on this I am able to see that image which I just selected from the animation library of the game lab. Now let's add some more frames in the same way we added this one. So again I need to hit this add new frame button and from this emoji section I am going to select uh, this frame. Let's select this one okay uh, now again I'm going to add one more frame to this sprite okay so I'm done with adding three new frames to this sprite over here now when you'll come on this coding panel and run this game this is what you're going to see as an output so every time any of these uh, sprites will touch this burger over here you will get to see them all changing into some other uh, sprite so this is one of the ways you can make your game more interesting 
for the players. Let's reset this game. Now I'm going to add some more interactivity to this game by adding a sound uh, to this collision thing which is happening over here. So every time uh, this any of these sprites which are there in this uh, group named variable will touch this burger, I would like to hear a sound from the background. So for doing that, we can come down over here. So we guys can make use of this if loop. Let's put it over here. And now I am going to come on this group section and let's pick up this group dot is touching target block and I'm putting it over here. So every time the group will touch the target, what should happen? I would like to hear a sound uh, in the background. So let's add this play sound block. Now I'm going to convert it back into block based coding. And from this drop down over here, I am going to come on this beautiful sound library where, uh, you know, there are different categories we can see. Now uh, let's choose a relevant sound from one of these uh, categories down here. So I'm going to choose from this hits section. This one is good. So let's choose this one. We just have to hit this choose button. Automatically the soundtrack is going to get added like this uh, in this workspace. Now when you'll run this game, let's see whether we'll be able to get the required output or not. We are able to hear the sound in the background, right? Absolutely fine. So this one is working perfectly fine. Let's now reset this game and add the score part to this beautiful game. So for doing that, we can uh, we need to declare a counter variable right on the top over here. So I'm going to make use of this variable section and let's pick this block and drop it over here. So X is a variable which I am going to make use of for keeping a check on the score of the burger. And I'm initializing it with zero for now. Let's come down and here inside this if loop which I've defined in this workspace for uh, checking the collision between the group uh, variable, group sprites and the target sprites. I'm going to place the required code. So this is the code X is equals to X plus one. Right, so every time the group will hit this target, the value of x is going to get incremented by 1. Now I'm going to make use of this watcher section to check whether we'll be able to get the required output or not. So as you can see, these group sprites are touching the burger. But we are not able to see the value of x incrementing, right? Why is it so? Because you know this uh, code over here is working for uh, the whole group. It is not working for a single sprite over here. Right. If all these sprites will touch the burger, then only the value of X is going to get incremented by one. So what is the code with which we can keep a check on the collision between this burger sprite? and these individual sprites over here. So for doing that, uh, there is a very beautiful block which you can easily find in this group section. Uh, so this is the one which we are going to make use of group.getI along with group.isTouching. Let's first define an if loop over here in this workspace. So now, uh, individually, I'm going to check the collision between the sprites which are there in the group uh, variable and the target. So for that, we can first place this group dot is touching over here. And in place of this group, we can make use of group dot get I. Right. Now, where are we going to get the value of this I variable from? So for that, what we can do, see, there are in total 30 sprites which are getting created on this uh, playground. Okay, so what we can do in order to keep a check on the collision uh, of the sprites uh, which are there in the group section and the target, that is burger, we can 
define we can make use of this for loop so I'm putting it over here and this code I am going to cut it from here and let's put it inside this for loop now let's change this 4 to 30 this loop is now going to run 30 times let's game and see whether we'll be able to get the required output or not so at present x is equal to 0 okay so the value of x is constantly increasing right so this is how you can make use of this for loop with this if loop to keep a check on the collision between the sprites which are there in this group named variable and the target right okay so now we are going to check out how can we get this score uh, reflected on this playground over here so the best way is to make use of this text block which you can easily find in this drawing section of the toolbox so this is the one which we, which we are going to use for getting this code reflected on the playground let's come up and right on the top just after this point where I have defined this block for creating the sprites I am going to define this text block and inside this we are going to write down first something like your score is okay and now we can make use of this concatenation operator and after that we can write down the name of the variable with which you know which we have defined on this beautiful platform for keeping a check of this code now when you'll run this game you will be able to see uh, this text getting reflected right on the top over here all right so i don't want so the well as you can see the score is constantly increasing right but i don't want the score to get reflected over here i would like to see it somewhere getting reflected in the bottom so for doing that we can change the coordinates of this text so uh, you know i would like to get the score reflected somewhere down here so the coordinates of this point are 226 and 381 let's change this to 220 and this one i'm changing uh, to 340 besides uh, let's let's increase the font size also of this text so for doing that we can make use of this text size property i'm going to put it right before this text uh, block let's change this to uh, 18 now when you'll run this game you will be able to see the score getting reflected over here but but the issue is it is not properly visible to us right let's change the text color so for changing the text color we can make use of this fill color property i am going to place it uh, right between these two blocks and let's change this to white so now uh, the, this text is going to get reflected in white color on this playground like this right so now it is visible to us properly okay so that's how you can make it more uh, interesting for the user okay now we are going to see how can we create an apk file of this beautiful game that we have developed on code.org in the game lab so what we need to do we need to hit this share button first and automatically we are going to uh, come across this beautiful dialog box where we'll get to see the link with which we can access the game we just created so we uh, need to copy this link by pressing ctrl and c together we can do it now let's come on google and try and find out a good uh, website with which we can convert that copied link into an apk file so you just have to type this create dot apk file from links for free on google when you'll press enter button these are couple websites you're going to come across so I'm going to make use of this appsgeezer.com for converting my for uh, creating the apk file of my game now let's hit this button and see what's gonna happen so the name of this website is apps geezer okay so uh, you know you are going to get redirected on this beautiful page where you will get to see this uh, text input box 
in which you are required to paste the link of your app so i need i need to press ctrl and v together for pasting the link which i just copied from that code.org platform let's hit the save button and see what is going to happen okay so uh, okay so uh, now we need to hit this next button and this is asking for us the name we which we would like to give to our app so i am giving it fight with burger let's hit this next button okay so now here uh, we can define it okay so for now i am not going to change this icon let's make use of this default icon only now i'm going to hit this next button okay so this is the option you're going to come across create let's hit this create button and see what is going to happen so automatically you're going to get redirected on this page uh, where you will be asked to log in into this apps geezer website first uh, so you can make use of these options which are available over here I'm going to make use of my gmail id for logging in into this website Once you are done with logging into this website automatically, uh, you're going to come across your dashboard. Right on the top, you'll be able to see this button, download APK. Let's hit this button and see whether we'll be able to get the APK file of this game we just created on code.orgonauts. Okay, so this is a message which uh, the website has redirected me on. Now I'm going to hit this send app to email button. fine okay now i'm let's check uh, whether i have received any mail on my gmail id with which i just logged in in this apps geezer website okay so i have received a mail on my email address let's check what is there inside this mails okay so download your app this is what is getting reflected in this message over here let's hit this button and see what's gonna happen okay so this is a page you're going to get uh, redirected to so this is a page you're going to come on and Okay, Apps Geezer is right now building my app. It is going to take two to five minutes for this website to build my app completely. Let's hit this download button. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this APK file is currently getting downloaded on my desktop, right? This is the one. So that's how you can create an APK file of your uh, game, your mobile apps, whatever you have created on code.org using this beautiful website, the name of which is Apps Geezer. Now I am going to transfer this APK file on my mobile phone and I am sending this file on this number so we can put a we can uh, just drag it and drop it over here like this let's hit the send button uh, so I am done with successfully sending this APK file uh, to this number on my whatsapp this is the file now I'm going to download this APK file on my mobile so the file has got successfully downloaded on my mobile phone let's 
hit this install uh, button which is getting reflected right in the bottom of this screen so the app is currently getting installed on my phone okay so it I am done with successfully installing this app on my mobile phone now I'm going to open this app and see whether I'll be I will be able to access all the screens that I've defined for this game on code.org or not okay so I am able to you know play this game so that's how you can create an APK file and install the same on your mobile device Hope you guys enjoyed this lecture a lot. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.